Hey, Joe from Coding Blocks here, and I'm looking at building a, a new developer workstation, and I haven't seen so many YouTube videos that kind of talked about the, the various parts that um, developers are considering for their machines, so I thought it might be kind of fun to talk about that. And uh, I'm not a gearhead, never have been, so I won't be going too much into the, the weeds here, but I do like having a fast desktop. And laptops are great, um, there's no doubt about it, they're portable, they're really powerful, they're great dev machines, but I've just always really liked having kind of a, like a battle station. And uh, maybe I'm just old school or whatever, but I actually uh, I used to build desktops um, like every three years, kind of like on clockwork. But recently, it's kind of slow. I think my current desktop is about four to five years old, and uh, it's actually holding up really well. It's got i7 in there, fourth generation. Uh, the video card's pretty old, but um, it's just it's starting to show its age a little bit now. And I'm doing a lot more video editing for stuff like this, and so I uh, thought it was the right time to upgrade. And uh, big thanks to Nick Nick Socha for pointing me at uh, PCPartPicker.com, uh, which is a great site, and it's got really nice builds and really you know, beautiful battle, battle stations to look at. Uh, there's a lot of information, but my favorite part, of course, is the System Builder. So you can come in here and choose your parts, and it'll kind of help guide you to things that are compatible or popular, and uh, it's, it's just really cool to see. And the first thing I kind of noticed when popping in here was uh, that AMD was the top of the pile. And this surprised me because, you know, Intel has been kind of dominating the market for so long, like the last 10 years or so. I don't even think I've really considered AMD for uh, one of my builds. So I was really interested in seeing that. And uh, you can go in and kind of compare these two chips. And you'll see, like, um, they got the same number of cores. The Intel is definitely faster here. But if we go in and compare these two, you'll see that it's not that far off for a $200 uh, price point. So I think that if you are looking at building a developer workstation and budget is your primary concern, then this is a, a great way to go. I did a lot of reading on the chips. They're really popular. There's a, a lot of other benefits that I'm not going to be able to explain really well, but they're all rated really highly, and it's a really popular chip for good reason. And so um, I thought that was really cool. And there's some other benefits too, like if you uh, get a compatible motherboard. Uh, I'm just going to pick this guy then this motherboard is guaranteed to support any chips that AMD releases up until 2020, which is not something that happens with Intel. And so if you do want to get the $164 chip this year and two, three years from now, you want to upgrade to like a $1,000 uh, AMD Threadripper, then you can do that without replacing your motherboard. Not a huge deal, but it's just kind of nice to be able to pop that in there and not have to worry about upgrading your whole system every couple of years. And uh, as far as memory goes, this is something I really sweated over a lot. Um, I think uh, my work machine's got 32 gigs of RAM on it and running Visual Studio, SQL Server, um, you know, no type stuff. It'll definitely use uh, that RAM pretty good. But it's a big price jump to go up to 64. So if we come down here and look at those 64s. You, know, you can see, like at you know, basically minimum, we're looking at four hundred something dollars. So just it is tough to swallow for RAM, which is you know used to be cheaper. And I, you know, I I can't tell you that sixty four is right for you. It really depends on a lot, uh, a lot of what you're doing and stuff. And I'm doing the video editing and stuff and some other things. I do audio editing from a time from time to time. So it's nice to have that uh, extra RAM. So I think that's something that's worth it for me. But I absolutely think you can get away with uh, thirty two and even you know really even 16 um you know, it just depends on kind of what your budget is and what you have in mind uh video card is another great way to spend money you can easily uh double the price of your computer just with that but uh, i like that they've got a, a cheaper option uh to our cheaper options up here at the top so uh, i think when i i went through we'll just go here and kind of click through and pick the uh kind of the top suggestions here and I'm going to go with 32 gigabytes just because I have some snob. Uh, storage, I definitely got to get a solid state drive. It's such a huge improvement when you're dealing with lots of files like on those node builds or whatever. It's just uh, incredible. So if you come down here and do a solid state drive, 860 EVOs are great. Say a terabyte, sure. And luckily I've got plenty of cases laying around that I can do projects with just because I've been doing this for a long time. So that's not such a big deal. And uh, I like that. If we go back to the list. 
uh, we can see that I've actually got the wattage uh, requirements up here, so I can know that this uh, <laughs> this is going to more than cover uh, my power needs. And I mean that's pretty much it. Uh, of course, you know if you're going to be running Windows, or whatever, that's going to be uh, extra cost unless you've got an OEM sticker laying around somewhere. But it's still pretty cool to see that you can get like a, a full computer, a full you know battle station that is going to do really good for developer type stuff for about a thousand bucks. And uh, I think this is a really good build. I would be happy to have this. However, I do want to say, if budget is not your primary concern and you just want to build an amazing uh, developer rig, then what you got to do is look up Nick Craver's build. And Nick Craver, if you don't follow him on Twitter, you should. A really smart guy, works at Stack Overflow. And for years now, has been publishing builds. So he's got the build that is kind of standard for Stack Overflow employees. And uh, I think uh, when I kind of built this out and added it up, I, I ended up around um, $2,600. And you start throwing tax and stuff on that if you live in the U.S. or um, certain states. And that uh, can easily start encroaching, encroaching in on $3,000, which is uh, a lot of money. But if you really want to build uh, you know, a beast of a machine and you don't care about how much you're spending, then this is a, a great option too. So, um, yeah. So I just want to show you that. So... Uh, great site. These are kind of the two sides of the spectrum I looked at, and I'm probably going to end up somewhere in the middle. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. And if you uh, set a like and maybe check out the podcast where we talk about uh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, thanks, and good generic time today.